They're so young, so full of life, and behind the wheel, so deadly. They love their cars, they think they're invincible. They're not. Two P-plate drivers are killed every week. No wonder parents are scared. Driving a car is the most dangerous thing a teenager can do. And science can tell us why. It seems their brains are not fully equipped to handle all the pressures involved. In fact, on the test track, you can see it. A 17-year-old driver is more reckless, less in control than a 19-year-old. So armed with this information and high-tech cars, the experts are now devising new ways to save these precious lives. All I remember is just before the crash and the car started to slide, going sideways. Brooke Pratt has lived through the horror of a devastating road crash. We were doing about 180, and by the time we hit the tree, it would have been about 160. And then just bang, like it's just so fast. Her three friends died around her as she lay trapped in the twisted wreckage. Brooke was a passenger. How she survived at all is extraordinary. You slid the police safe for 75 metres in that car. Yeah, it doesn't feel like that. I can't explain how fast it is and how scared you are, especially being trapped and not being able to move and hearing their phones ringing, knowing they were dying and screaming and saying, don't, you know, answer your phone, wake up, wake up. This is too much. This has got to stop. Road safety veteran Professor Ian Johnston has spent 40 years finding ways to stop teenagers doing deadly things behind the wheel. They believe they're capable of doing almost anything that's needed. They don't believe that speed matters. They love the risk taking. And they're killing themselves. And they're killing themselves in very large numbers. The numbers aren't just large, they're staggering. Two Aussie P-plate drivers die every single week. The biggest killer of our youth and a national tragedy. Now, science is suggesting a major cause lies in the teenage brain. Peter, what we've got here is a 3D model of the brain. This is... New research reveals the human brain hasn't fully developed till the age of 25. Now, if we look at the brain of someone under the age of 25... And until drivers reach full maturity, they're an accident waiting to happen. That whole green section is the frontal lobe. That's the bit that controls emotions, controls risk-taking, controls decision-making. And the research is saying that it develops quite slowly. But as a generalisation, the 18-year-old brain is more mature in those areas of risk-taking decision-making than the 17-year-old brain. Behind the wheel, that one year can mean the difference between life and death. Just killed him. Yep. You'll need to accelerate fairly briskly to get... You know, to test this theory, we put a group of young drivers through their paces. The thing that research shows about young drivers is it's both inexperience, but also that overconfidence that comes with being young and the, and the thrill of risk taking. Is he dead? Oh, he's not well, he's not well. How'd you feel about that, Craig? Yeah, it was fun. It was fun? Yeah. What if that had been a real person? Well, I'd be dead and I'd be in jail. And what's your attitude out there as a young driver? Is it, you know, I'll be all right, I'm a good uh... driver. My attitude, I'm a bit cocky with myself sometimes. I think I'm a bit better than I really am, and I tend to make mistakes a lot. Do you know how many pea platers are dying? Um, a lot, because they're probably trying to show off to their mates as well. Let me tell you, two every week. Yeah. I, I don't want to be one of them. It's results like these that have road safety veterans like Ian Johnston calling to raise the national licensing age to 18. There's no doubt the higher we make it, the less death there's going to be because the, the really danger period is when they first start to go solo and, and they think that they are bulletproof and can do almost anything. Was he bulletproof? He thought he was. And I believed it too. I thought he was invincible. Never dreamed that anything like this would happen to him.
Nathan Watts was just 16. Another statistic mourned in another roadside shrine. Another family gutted by the loss of a son, a brother. It's overwhelming. It still hasn't sunk in. Still don't believe it. Do you know what speed Nathan was doing? Um, they calculated it over 100 kilometres an hour. And it was just a one stupid mistake. Just weeks ago, Nathan and his mate Jack Muir slammed into this telegraph pole at high speed and were killed instantly. Nathan had pinched his mum's car to drive to a party after midnight, a young bloke living life in the way too fast lane. No, I said to him over and over again just to slow down. Because they don't realise, kids don't realise how hard it is for us. What would he say back to you? Stop trying to play mum. He'd say, oh, you're not the boss of me. And now I know he, he would be saying, I'm sorry. Booby, I can't hear it. But even with kids like Nathan dying on our streets every weekend, the attraction of powerful cars and high speed can prove irresistible. The supercharger belt on the thing keeps coming loose, so I've just got to tighten it up every now and again. When you got nice big shiny wheels, you like to show them off. <laughs> It's two years since Brooke Pratt watched three friends die in her own terrible accident. For her, the sight of teenagers spending a Friday night hooning in their cars is hard to take. I just want to target all these little bastards and just grab them and just shake them and say, what is wrong with you? You know, these people, I don't know what is going on in their brains. I know when I was 17, I was pretty overconfident myself. It seems teenagers never change. But if we're to keep them alive, maybe their cars have to. I learned to drive on a car just like this one. Safety-wise, it was pretty basic. Seat belts, and that's about it. These days, most new cars have airbags and anti-lock brakes as standard. Maybe one solution is staring us in the face. Teenagers today are driving cars that are simply too old. Your average young driver is driving a 15-year-old car. They're a decade and a half behind the eight ball on safety technology and it kills them. Motoring consultant John Cadogan reckons these new cars are the single greatest weapon in the fight to bring down our teenage death toll. This is what we're talking about, Peter. If every new driver in Australia drove a modern car like this with airbags and stability control, the death rate would plummet overnight. But financially, this isn't feasible. You spend the 20 grand on a new car or you get a bunch of dead teenagers. It's that simple. But soon, car safety could be completely idiot-proof. And now we've come out into the 50 zone and I'm allowed to go back to the 50 limit. That's pretty good. I'm road testing the future, a high-tech version of your satellite navigation system that not only monitors your location, but controls your speed as well. This will revolutionise young driver safety. It might be Big Brother, but it simply won't allow me to break the law. OK, well, we're in a 50 zone now. Heading towards a 40 kilometre an hour school zone. I'm going to put my foot down and try and keep going at 50. And there we go, I can feel the power come off, the fuel flow has decreased and this system has stopped me speeding. I cannot go any faster no matter how hard I press the accelerator. That's pretty amazing. So the question is what's more important, saving young lives or restricting their freedom? That is exactly the question through the whole of road safety. It's that kind of balance. Would it save lives? Yep. What are the downsides and will society wear the downsides? Yep. 
technology and legislation can do so much, but there's nothing like a real life horror story to grab a teenager's attention. I had 13 broken bones, internal bleeding, um, my lungs were squashed flat so I couldn't breathe. I was put in a bracelet that I gave to him and people, the young kids don't realise that this is not enough. I, this, I can't hug this the way I hugged Mason. I just want young people to just stop. It's not fun. It's not fun when you see your mate die. It's not fun going to funerals. It is just the most heartbreaking thing in your life. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.